Ah, can you hear me now? Is it better? Ah, can you hear me now? Is it better? Ah, can you hear me now? Okay, I <laughs> need to turn my own sound down. <laughs> there you are. Hello, Janet. Hi, Adrian. Eileen, Nancy, Helen, Dolores, Yvonne. Adrian must have gone out and come back in. Ah, now you can hear me, right? Okay, good. Uh, this is my first time, so please, please have some grace because I've never done this before. Um, so what would y'all like to talk about tonight? Um, I did have one question that was in my comments I thought I'd work on answering. Um, someone, someone had asked about hems on knits, and I use... Um, the so keasy tapes to make the knits um, behave on the hemline but I did and I've shared this before it's very expensive so I keep the bag for it because it makes a nice little way to store it but and I only have a little bit left but I buy the easy knit from Pelon and then I cut one inch strips of it so that um, it's the same thing pretty much as long as you cut it with the stretch and then you can iron this stuff on and it's just like the Sokeezy tapes. Much, much cheaper. So. so what are you working on? See, Dolores, you're in Little River, South Carolina. How's the weather there today? But it's, it's actually pretty nice here. It actually snowed the day before yesterday. But um, today, my husband and I went for a drive. It was really nice to get out of the house. And um, yeah, it's really pretty here today, actually. It's in the 50s. Nice. Oh, let's see. Now can you hear me though? Okay. All right, so what are you sewing today? Yes, I have so uh, I have steam a seam also, and I like that as well. Um, actually, that works by itself. You don't even have to um, you know you can just use that to bond and you don't even have to sew it if you don't want to um, but I do have that I have the little quarter inch um, steam seam and I do like that um, uh, but when I want the one inch I, I just do this this is even cheaper than steam seam <laughs> because you just buy it uh, I bought some that was really wide at the warehouse and um, then I cut it in one inch strips and it just, it lasts forever. I, I just have to cut myself some more because I um, just haven't done that. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we have. Okay, Kathy's here. Uh, laundry day. Oh, a laundry day tea or you did your laundry? I'm hoping that's a laundry day tea. <laughs> that's a lot more fun than doing laundry. Uh, let's see. Ooh, 70 and storms coming. Yes, the good, good sewing weather for sure. Um, yes, this is a great idea, Dolores. I, I, um, it saves, I'm all about saving money in any way that we can because if you sew a lot, you know, all those little fun things can get really expensive. So I always try to find a way to um, have the help I need without spending an arm and a leg because, you know, they're just expensive. Making uh, dresses for your two-year-old granddaughter, aw. Which patterns are you making, Adrian? Um, I, you know, my favorite kids' pattern, little girls' dresses pattern is the geranium dress. Have you made the geranium dress um, made by Ray? Uh, it's got a lot of options. You can put collars and, I mean, it's just a really versatile little pattern. And the version that's, I think, zero to three months is free. But then there's a, a paid version that has sizes up to... Four or five T, I can't remember. Hello from Texas, Julie. I, uh, I'm a Texas girl too, as you guys probably have surmised by all my trips to San Antonio. <laughs> Lived in Texas for uh, several years. Had my babies down there, both of them. Oh, okay. Um, S. Johnson, you have a question about downloading patterns? Go ahead and shoot your question here. We'll see if we can answer it. 
Oh, you are working on four geranium dresses. Oh, man, I'd love to see those when they're done. You should uh, send me a pic and I can show them to everybody. That is really cool. Um, oh, and you're in Washington State. Uh, S. Johnson's in Washington State. Kathleen. All right. All right, good. Send a pic. Um, S. Johnson wants, is getting back into sewing and you want to know the easiest way to print the patterns. There's easy and there's, there's inexpensive. Easy way is to send your files off to one of those PDF printing places. That's very, very easy. But um, I don't do that. I've actually never done that because it's like, I don't know, tell, refresh my memory, anybody who does it. But it's, it's costly. Um, it's a couple dollars a page, I think, at least. And then by the time you buy the pattern, have it printed, and then if you're going to keep that pattern and use it over and over, then you're going to want tracing paper on top of that. So I just print them. I just print them on my, on my printer and tape them together. It's not hard. It's just time, you know, uh, time consuming. So um, I'll just like sit here and put on a movie. I'm right behind the camera. Back there is a TV screen, and I have a Roku in here and everything. So I'll just put on a movie and um, just tape my patterns together, and I'll save them to where I have two or three to put together, and then I'll just sit here and do that for the evening and watch movie. Um, makes it not too terribly bad. It's kind of relaxing, actually. Um, but that's not the easiest way, but it is the cheapest way. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, you're in Chicago, Eileen. Oh, cool. You guys have the weather that we'll have tomorrow, usually. <laughs> That's how it works. Uh, Kathleen's in Wildwood, Missouri. Wow, you guys are from all over the place. Um, and then as far as downloading, I guess I said, I answered your question about printing patterns, but I didn't really, we talked, didn't really talk about downloading. Um, you can download them and store them wherever you want. What I do for myself is I actually have a Google Drive and I have a folder on my Google Drive for sewing patterns. And what makes that nice is when I go to the store then, I have the information on my phone that I can pull up and see how much, if we ever get to go to the store again, <laughs> I can see how much fabric I need just at a glance. And um, it makes it really you know, really easy. You have everything you need with you all the time. Um, if you're, you know, a little bit friendly with your smartphone, that might be the easiest way. But I just download it right from my phone to the files section on my phone, and then I upload it to Google Drive, and it works out really well. Hello from Ohio. Yes. And, oh, oh there's two. Okay, Patricia's from Ohio. And Paula is from Sweden. Oh, wow. That's cool. And she's, uh, my, I'm going to say your name wrong. Milky, is that right? I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Um, but you're from Amsterdam. Welcome. And uh, let's see, Dave and Julie, you asked, have you talked about your new cover stitch machine yet? I haven't. Um, maybe I'll go get it and show it to you. I got the brother, the... Um, 2340. It's an inexpensive cover machine. And the reason I got the less expensive one is since it's new to me, I'm not really sure how much I'm going to use it. So I bought that one. If I decide then to upgrade, I'll have some time to, to do some, you know, looking. But, but this one actually has, you know, four and five stars everywhere. Um, I'm a Janome person and I had thought I would save and get the Janome, but actually there's a lot of complaints about skip stitches. Now, I don't know if maybe if any of you have it, you can, you know, put someone's mind at ease, but I was a little afraid of, because that's a lot more money. And um, so I just bought the inexpensive one. I'm going to, I'll show it to you here.
here it is. This is my new baby. <laughs> it's uh, got a four thread, so you can have uh, the three needle cover stitch. So far, I've really liked it. Um, it, it is, you know, it is a lower end machine, but um, I wasn't sure how much I would use it. And if I am truly only using it on hems. I didn't want to spend a lot of money for something that I was only going to use for like one thing. So I just, um, I'll just see. I, a lot of people really like this machine. I got on the Cover Stitch Facebook group and asked around and decided to buy this one. I paid $330 um, on Joanne's sale um, and it was free shipping. So it was like 308 some other places, but then there was shipping. So... Um, I ended up getting this from Joann's. Uh, okay, D is interested in baby or in cover stitch as well. Oh, South Wales, hi Paula, Helen Reed, hi. Another person from Chicago, Mary. You're working on a Love's Notions Rhapsody. Awesome. So am I. Actually, I'm working on a, a version to make to um, show when it re-releases really soon. Um, Oh, you love your Janome. Uh, Adrian says she loves her Janome Cover Pro. Um, you you haven't had a single problem. Yeah, I you know I probably will end up eventually doing that. Um, I just wasn't sure, so um, maybe it was stupid to buy the lower end one, but. Um, I'll probably use it a lot more than I think I will. I like to sew a lot of knits, so I probably, it's going to be something that I use a lot and I'll end up upgrading probably. Um, it's very easy to thread. Much, much easier than the um, serger. So uh, basically, can you actually show you here? Basically, um, this is the looper. And so you just... I'm doing this from behind here. You just have to go down and through, and then this pulls out and it pops over so you can get to it real easy. Like the serger, I have to like dig in there and find the looper and all that, but this just does that. And then the needles just thread, so it's real easy. No, D, an overlocker and a, um, or I'm sorry, yes, an overlocker and a serger are the same. An, a serger and a cover stitch are different. Teresa's from Virginia. Hello, Teresa. Let's see, I hope I'm not missing any questions here. So, Adrian, you have not had any skip stitches with your Janome? That's good to know because... Um, uh, oh, you got yours for 500 I probably should have held out. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to... I thought this would be such a good time to learn how to use something new because we're stuck home. So I just bit the bullet and, and bought this this one. Uh, although, you know, I'm so far I'm really happy with it. So, you know, I don't know if I'll end up upgrading or not. But um, I, a lot of people liked the Juki. I noticed on the Cover Stitch Facebook group, a lot of people are saying that that Juki, um, that's right around five or six hundred, is really good as well. Janome threading's identical. Yeah, I I I would imagine they're all pretty close to the same. Oh, but question about a bathing suit. Okay, Kathy, can you use a regular bra? You know, I think you probably could. Um, you'd probably just want to cut it apart and use the cups. Um, you could use the support band as well if you can just figure out how to put it in there. I mean, you'd have to do some creative surgery to the bra, but I think you could definitely use that. I don't know why not. Um, never tried it, but I, I think that would be, especially if you have a really supportive bra that you like, you, I'm sure you could probably do that. <laughs> be a lot more expensive, but... Yeah, I think four or five stars usually if it, I you expect a couple of bad comments on something, you know, no matter what it is. Um, so you, if it's four and a half or five stars, usually, yeah, you're right, Dee, that's pretty good. Um, and so far I have no complaints. Um, yes, Joanne, I know, a lot of cover stitches are like $1,200, which is why I didn't want to, 
I think the baby locks are up there like that. So I didn't want to spend that much just until I know what, how much I use it. Um, yeah, that Juki serger, I've had my eye on that. Um, I have a Janome serger, but it's a bear to thread. Um, so that is another thing that's on my list of things that I would like to have is the, um, the pneumatic, the pneumatic, the, the, I can't talk. <laughs> you guys don't see me make these mistakes because I edit them out. <laughs> the pneumatic threader. Um, that would be nice. I don't have that. Um, I um, beg my serger to behave. And y'all have seen the trick where you tie, um, this, is, this is not a serger, but where you tie the, the next thread onto here and then you just make sure that you're not going through any of the tension discs and you can um, you rotate back the, the thing so it like takes all the tension off of it. And then you can just pull the thread through. I, it works about 80 to 90% of the time for me. So um, if you'd like to see that, let me know and I can show you that um, as well. And hopefully it'll work the time that I show you, but excuse me. Um, I, yeah, it's, it, it does make it easier, but air threading would be so nice. Okay. Let's see. Rhapsody, I think, is being re-released to extend the sizes. Um, it's going to be, um, there's going to be a larger size range. And I think she's done a couple tweaks to the fit. Um, I'm working on the new version as a tester, um, kind of. I was testing, but I got sick, you know, last week. So I really didn't get everything done in time. So I'm not really an official tester of that anymore. But I am making a final garment for the for the release. Um, Paula's in love with her baby lock. You have dual functionality, cover stitch and an overlocker. That's nice. Um, do you find, Paula, that it it's uh, hard to switch back and forth? I've heard that from a couple people um, that had the, the machines that do both. Um, I don't know. I, that would be great because it would save space because, like, this room is getting smaller by the day. <laughs> I have room for one more machine in here. I have my sewing machine over there, my serger there, my silhouette uh, vinyl cutter there, my a printer, and then this is taken over this table now, and my heat press is on that table. So there's, like, no table space left. None. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I'm going to have to... Uh, do something if I need an, any other kind of machine. Um, I do would like to get an embroidery machine at some point, but um, one of the two might need to be a combo. Either the sewing machine has to have embroidery or um, the serger and overlocker would be the same. You know, nothing in my life, Adrian, is organized except this room. <laughs> and I just, I, he did that as a gift to myself. First of all, my husband gave me this room as a Mother's Day gift probably four or five years ago. He did everything. And he took my, you know, what I wanted, and he just ran with it. And it, it turned out just beautiful. Um, my, my pegboard is my favorite thing. I mean, it's four, uh, four feet high and two feet, two or three feet wide, three feet wide. So it's like three by four. Three by, I'm sorry, no, it's four by six. So I love it. It stores a lot. Um, that's my very favorite thing. What I found was I was buying things I already had all the time. I would buy even patterns. I'd buy a pattern, and then I'd find out I had the thing already. So I decided I needed to organize my sewing so that I know what I have, and I'm only buying things that I know I don't have. So it has helped me a lot. I'm not, I am very, like, I'm very right-brained. I don't, I don't usually, administration and organizing is not in my DNA at all. But um, it is in my husband's, and um, I promised him when he made this room for me that I would keep it organized. So I'm holding up my end of the deal. <laughs> so, um, and I actually, I've learned, it's a learned thing for me. It's not a natural thing at all. Um, but it does really help. You save money and you're, 
you're spending your money on things that you need instead of, um, you know, things that you want. I've, I've organized my stash in Trello. I had did a video on that. Um, I've organized my patterns. About I have about 60% of them all entered into the Patterns app. On um, It's on my iPhone. And I, I did a video about that one a while back, too. Um, yeah, so that, that, that helps me stay organized. It helps me to have a place. The rest of my house is a disaster, really. You wouldn't even, I, you, I would not even take a camera into my bedroom right now. It's so bad. So, yeah, this is my space to come, and it's peaceful. It's fairly organized, and um, it's just all me. <laughs> Uh, oh, you have the FAF icon, Joanne. Combo machine, and you love it. Cool. Uh, let's see. Mrs. Mike says combo machines are challenging. She has a shelf for her machines to swap out quickly as she ran out of room for more machines. Yeah, that, that'd be hard. I, yeah, because I just... I'll sew 15 minutes here and 15 minutes there. Um, so there are days I'm up here all day, but... Um, I'm more likely to grab it for a little while and then have to go do something and then come back. Um, it would be hard to swap them out. <laughs> Paula says, since I don't need to feed the looper only needle. Yes, that's true. It would be a lot easier if you didn't have to thread the looper every time. Yeah, I can see that. Thank you, Dee. I love my sewing room. It was a, it was a beautiful gift that my husband gave me. And um, it used to be my daughter's bedroom. So thank you, um, Aaron, my son-in-law, for uh, marrying my daughter so I could have her space. <laughs> oh. oh, you got the pattern app, but can't figure it out. You take a picture and it disappears. Hmm. What is happening? Like, you take a picture. Just, so do you enter the pattern? And then you go in through the pattern and say, camera, and take the photo. Uh, maybe I'll add a pattern on my iPad and show you. Would you like me to do that? Um, okay. Teresa says, I got two times a week all year for water aerobics and was making suits to wear for that. Regular bras just weren't holding up. Oh, yeah. The indoor pools are very chlorinated. Yeah. So you would... Yeah, you would want to definitely have put good support in there. Um, Paula says, by the way, I cut out my willow dress for like six months ago. I haven't sewn it yet and don't know why. You know what? You, you guys, how long have you guys seen those things hanging in here on my videos? I um, The two pairs of pants are Sabrina Slims that were tester versions when I was testing the pattern. And I... They fit okay. They're not, you know, they were part of the figuring out. They're not perfect yet. And <laughs> there's not much that really, one of them just needs to be hemmed. And, I mean, I can wear them. They're not terrible bad, but they're not perfect fit um, because they were, you know, part of the tested version. And then the other one is a jumpsuit that I was making. And I just, I think it was, I was making it the last thing before Mexico. And I just think... That since I didn't get to go, it's just I just haven't gotten back to it. So I need to I need to finish it for summer. Um, it's a combo uh, Ellie and Mac South Shore uh, jumpsuit with the um, or it's called the South Shore romper, but it's a jumpsuit. Um, and then I used their curved um, pocket tee on the top, um, and then I had to put a zipper in the back because obviously you can't get that neckline over your hips. Um, to get it on so I'll finish it um, but that was going to be for Mexico and um, if you guys weren't haven't been watching very long I don't know if you were around but when this thing all started I was supposed to leave March 14th and I had done a whole capsule wardrobe for Mexico and um, it's all hanging there ready for summer <laughs> I'll wear it again someday we did get to reschedule for May so hopefully 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 um, Hopefully we'll get to go. Let's see. Uh, Carla B says, "Oh, congratulations, Carla! You are one of the winners for the from the uh, drawing too." Um, 
thank you very much for um i do i love the i love the sewing room it's my favorite <laughs> Uh, Mary Dieter says, I have the Baby Lock Evolve combo machine and love it. Picked up a Janome Cover Pro 900 and use it most of the time for hems. I only change the Baby Lock over when I want a specialty hem. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, what kind of specialty hems do you do with your Cover Pro? Um, right now, I've only just used a two needle cover stitch um, on my like underwear that I've made and. Um, uh, the game day t-shirt that I did this week um, I used the cover pro on that for the top stitching around the uh, neckline and the hems on the sleeves and um, bottom Paula has an evolve too I know who else I think I saw um, Whitney has a, an evolve I think when she was showing her sewing room uh, one time she has a, an evolve uh, let's see Kathy said, I guess I'm not sure how the app works. I took pictures of the pattern, but it did appear later in my photos. Oh, it did, oh no, they don't appear in your photos later. If you take it from the app, it actually puts it into the app, but then it keeps your, it keeps your um, photo stream from getting cluttered with photos. So that's, um, that's why you can choose either the camera or you can choose um, to look at your fo uh, existing photos. Um, so I would, if I'm doing um, pattern envelopes like Simplicity and McCall's, I will just um, do the, you know, do the pattern envelope. I'll do that right in the app and then I don't have to have one of those pictures on my phone. You know, it doesn't stay on your phone then. Um, but if I'm doing like an Ellie and Mac pattern or a Love Notions pattern, I'll, um, I'll do a screenshot of like the front page of the pattern and use that in the app. So what's coming up this week for you guys for for sewing? I um I'm going to finish this rhapsody tomorrow that I'm working on and then I'm thinking that um I'm missing my grandkids. So, you know, I, it was really hard to take um, that little football jersey to my grandson and not really be able to see him um, put it on and everything. Um, but it was wonderful to see the pictures that my daughter-in-law took. But I was thinking that um, the other five, maybe it felt really good to do something for them since I haven't been able to see them. So I don't know, I was thinking maybe I might make each of them a little something this week. Um, I have a 12-year-old, almost 11-year-old, 7-year-old, 5-year-old, almost 6, and 4-year-old, um, almost 5, and then 2-year-old. So, um, yeah, got any pattern suggestions? Especially the tween girls, they're hard. How about tween girl patterns? Anybody have favorites? I really shouldn't drink a Diet Pepsi when I'm on live. <laughs> Adrian says she's addicted to the laundry day tea made a bunch for summer I need to branch out to another pattern wow that is a good one um, one that I really like is the um, well this is a belladonna I like the belladonna a lot too it's real easy breezy um, it's 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 just uh you know, loose and comfy. Um, I also like the Ellie and Mac uh, Everyday Tee that um, has some like curve to it. Um, you, you can do a relaxed fit or you can do the curved fit. And I really like the curved fit because it gives me like actual shape when I don't have one. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I really like that one a lot. Um, I think I wore it in a video not too long ago, but um, it was pink. I don't know. I, I don't have it in here, but um, it's a wonderful pattern. I really like that one a lot. I've made two of those so far, but um, it's one of those patterns, like there's certain patterns that are never going to like hit the archives because you're going to be making them over and over. Um, and I have 
quite a few. My pattern storage is in my basement. So I have quite a few of them in the basement that I'm working on filing. Um, and I have um, the, the Ellie and Mac and Love Notions <laughs> tend to stay up here. Um, they're just good, you know, like all of them. So, uh, okay, let's see. Paula says, I've just, let's see. I'm going to catch up here. Mrs. Mike said, planning a back-to-work wardrobe since Texas is going to start slowly opening back up. Awesome. That is wonderful. Where, uh, what type of work do you do, uh, Mrs. Mike? I'd love to um, love to see your makes. Um, thank you very much. I love um, I, I love fabric. It's like I just love it. Um, Dolores says the everyday tea. Yes, I I I agree on that. Um, Paula says I just finished a crop top to one of for one of my granddaughters, and I'm trying to sew myself a pair of pants. Old pattern from Simplicity, my very first pants. Isn't that fun? Um, you know, it was memory lane when I was categorizing patterns the other day. I actually, I posted on Instagram, but I've actually found the pattern that um, I used to make my dress for my high school graduation in 1975. I still have that pattern. So, yeah, it was like, oh, I made this for my baby boy, and I made this for, you know, it's like, when you've been sewing a lot of years, I mean, walking through the patterns was like a, you know, I don't know. I, I thought about getting rid of some, but some of those, I don't know. I don't think I'll get rid of them. Um, let's see. Mary Dieter says, loving the Love Notions Melody Dolman right now and anything Ellie and Mac. Yes, yes to both. I love, I love the Melody Dolman. I have plans to make a robe out of that, a summer robe. Um, by lengthening it, lengthening it, and then um, you know, adding a, some belt loops, I thought it would make a really cute robe. Um, I have some fabric I've had for a long time. Let's see if I can grab it. So I've had this like silky fabric for a long time, and I thought it would make such a neat. Um, summer robe and using the Melody Dolman pattern only lengthening it. I bought this at the warehouse in San Antonio probably the first time I went so it's been like probably four or five years so I've had this on my shelf and just not done anything with it so it's pretty though I love purple. I don't know why I haven't done anything with it to be honest. <laughs> uh, let's see. Carol says, hi, Carol. I hadn't seen your name yet. Um, I'm working on a Simplicity Top 8601. I don't know which one that is, but there's a lot of cute ones in Simplicity right now. Uh, Julie says, do you have a favorite knit fabric you use repeatedly for tops? I've had some trouble picking fabric that doesn't work well. Yeah, there's a lot of knits that are really thin, and some are just not as good as others. Um, I like double brush poly a lot, only it can be a little bit hot in the summer, but it is very nice to work with. And, um, this is like a cotton jersey with some spandex. Co cotton spandex is probably my favorite. Um, it's usually really nice. And this one is, um, it's like a double brush poly, but it's not not quite as thick as some of them um, but it has some cotton in it I'm pretty sure because it's real cool um, let's see thank you Mary uh, you arrived late Carol that's all right it's come as you are come, come and go as you please it's, it's, it's good uh, let's see Chris says, that sounds like a great idea for summer robe. Yes, I know. I can't wait. I'll be sure and share it with you when I do it. Um, Victoria, Australia, good morning. <laughs> it's evening here. Good morning. Glad the time worked out for you, uh, Susan. Carol says, it has the ties at the waist and sleeves. I'm spending more time at the ironing board than the sewing machine. Yeah, those, but you know what, those those patterns that are like that, they usually end up being worth it. 
you know, the details, it, sometimes it's all about the details. So, yeah. I, but every once in a while, it's nice to just make a, you know, quick knit thing. And um, But then every once in a while, you know, you want to make something that has all those little details. But they do take time at the ironing board. You're right. Uh, Paula says, that fabric is beautiful and I admire the fabrics behind you. Thank you so much. Um, that's just a combination of stuff that I've picked up from shopping warehouses, Fabric Mart online, and um, Girl Charlie. I like Girl Charlie a lot, too. Uh, let's see. Um, Deborah Chu. Hi, Deborah. She's working on a wearable muslin for the Pietra pant. Oh, those look nice. Uh, definitely look nice. Um, I haven't made those yet, but I like closet case patterns anyway. They're all really good. Chris says, I need a cotton summer weight cardi, but don't know how to purchase fabric. Any suggestions? I would go with um, something like this, like a cotton spandex. It would breathe um, if you want it to be really lightweight. Um, you know, it's because it's soft then. Uh, so I would go with either double brush poly or a cotton spandex blend. Um, let's see. Or you want a completely cotton one, then I would go with like the cotton lycra. Well, that is a blend, but um, if you want 100% cotton, what you're going to find though is, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, what you're going to find if you go with 100% cotton is that there's not a lot of recovery. So like the little um, baby, like the like baby onesies, those knits, they don't have like if you if you uh, stretch them out, they don't come right back. So that makes it sewing with them difficult because that's when you get the wavy seams and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to make a, a cardi that stays a really nice shape, I would do something that has at least a little bit of lycra in it so that it, it stays really nice and doesn't stretch out on you. Um, that's my personal opinion anyway. Cotton knit for the cardi, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, let's see. Hi from Sacramento. Hello, Lisa. Carol, um, a quick knit top will be next. Yes, after you're spending all the time in the ironing board, for sure. Um, Adrian says, any re recommendations for a cardigan? I'm a pear-shaped. Worry about the shape covering my hips. I'm assuming you want them to cover your hips. Then I would go with, um, see, Ellie and Mac has the Chapman cardigan. Ellie and Mac has some really cute ones, actually. They've got several different ones. Um, I own the Chapman one, which is similar to the Blackwood. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, Helen's Closet's Blackwood cardigan, that's a nice one, too. The one thing about the Blackwood is that it doesn't, like, doesn't go around you like you can't pull it around you so it, it comes here like this which is nice I like that but if you don't you know if you want it to come all the way across then that's not a great choice but Chapman cardigan has kind of inlet inset patterns I mean pat pockets um, and then also the um, uh, itch to stitch has a couple that are really nice long ones um, and the, um, there's like a fairy, I can't think of what the name of it is with Ellie and Mac, but there's a couple of really nice ones that are flowy um, and will definitely cover your hips really nice. And then also the Canyon Cardigan um, by Love Notions will come down. It has a nice shape to it because it, it has like a bodice seam. And so it comes, you know, straight and then kind of, billows out a little bit which is it makes it really nice uh let's see okay ah, i'm way behind here sorry i talked too much um thank you lisa for watching i appreciate that orella oriella hello she found um he, hello today i finished sorrento bucket hat oh cool and tomorrow i'm going to sew a pair of shorts wow i'm ready for spring and summer i was going to start sewing trousers not shorts any suggestion for a first pair of trousers not jeans um i would go with um i'll tell you with the duet trousers 
if you want to make classic trousers with a zipper and everything, I would do the duet trousers from Love Notions because she has a wonderful fit book that goes with them and it tells you how to read the wrinkles. Um, I would do a muslin and you can make those out of knit or woven, but um, if you want to get the fit right, I would make a muslin out of similar fabric to what you want to use. So if it's a knit, you want to just use a cheap knit. If it's a woven, then you want to use, you know, and I just use bed sheets a lot of times, old bed sheets. Um, I just am not into spending a lot of money if you don't have to, if something else works. So, um, but I would definitely sew a muslin or buy some inexpensive fabric for your first pair. You know, that's another way to do it. Uh, let's see. Um, Adrian says, Girl Charlie has lovely knits. Yes, they are. Their prices are great all the time. Um, you're welcome, Chris. Uh, let's see. Dolores says, How about a line for a summer cardigan? Oh, linen. How about linen for a summer? Yeah, that'd be nice. You could do something like the quince um, from Seamwork. They have a like a kimono type cardigan. Um, let's see, Ariella says I made fall. I made fall in love. Fall in love. I think she means fall in love cardigan from Sew to Grow. I think it would work well for a pear shape. I haven't seen that one. I have to look that up. Linda says I'm a bit confused about the weights I see on knits on Fabric Mart. Does weight number work? Um. Yeah, I get confused about those too, except that the higher the the higher the ounces, the thicker the knit, heavier the knit is, which means it's going to be um, heavier generally is a little bit more expensive. Um, or it could be like a ponte that isn't as stretchy too. So it just depends on the type of knit that it is. But um, if you get a little bit heftier knit, it's usually going to be a little easier to work with, in my opinion. Really, really lightweight knits can go downhill looking cheap pretty fast. Um, but, you know, they're also beautiful when you when they're sewn right. So, uh, let's see. I don't know if that made any sense or not, but <laughs> I know what I mean. Um, yeah, if y'all are going to find out that I'm not that smart when I'm live. <laughs> Don't have time to look anything up. <laughs> Let's see. The Sinclair Harper. I've made that one. I like that one a lot. Um, it is a great Cardi and it is free. Um, Paula says it's to stitch Harper. No, actually the Harper is Sinclair patterns and it is definitely free. Um, yes. It, Chris, this one would be a really nice one that would you could throw on um, when it's chilly. I always have one when we go to a restaurant. Oh, restaurants, remember those? <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. It just gets, it's so like, it's weird. It's like that was another life almost. You might, Remember when we used to go to restaurants? Hmm. Um, yeah, I used to like that. Um, let's see. Love, love, love your program. God bless all from Ireland. Thank you so much, Margaret. My sister's name is Margaret. Um, Paula, it's to stitch or Sinclair patterns. I think it's Sinclair. Yes, it is. Definitely Sinclair. It's to stitch has the Aviero, I think, cardigan, which is a long one, similar, but it's not free. Um, <clears throat> yeah, check out the duet. Uh, jersey shirt top you linked to yesterday. How's that as far as time? Oh, you the game day shirt? Is that, I think, if you're talking about the one that I made the video on? Super quick. Um, basically, it's just the yoke, um, shoulder seams, and then you sew the front to the front yoke and the back to the back yoke, and sew in each sleeve and up the sides, and you're done, really. Uh, the decorating that shirt took way longer than making the shirt. Okay, let's see. Thanks, Solaris. It is weird to be on live, though. I can't. You guys, I, I edit out. I, it's so bad. My ums are so bad that I know the waveform on the video when I go, um, yeah. I'm working on it. I'm working on not saying um so much. Uh, let's see. Paula Madison, parallel universe out there. Miss it and my grandchildren. Amen to that. 
Oh, I was just in, yeah, I miss them so much. I mean, I've seen them through the window, but I just want to hug them. I know. Oh, you have four to make. Wow, that's a lot. You're going to be a busy girl. Um, Tracy, hi Tracy. I'm used to hemming knit tops with a narrow hem. Do you have any suggestions of how to get a nice looking hem on a knit top with a one inch hem like the Vivace Dolman? Actually, Tracy, I, I think you're the one who posted the question that I was trying to answer when I first uh, logged on and I'll say it again for you. Um, I use Sokeezy tapes um, or, or did use Sokeezy tapes which are these, and you can buy them. And I think someone even might have answered your question on the comment. Um, these are from, you, they're from Emma Seabrook, and you can buy them on Amazon or some of the other shops. But what I do, I love these, but they're expensive. It's like $10 for 25 yards, which doesn't sound like a lot. But when you talk about, you know, being almost two yards to go around one hem that, it, it adds up. So what I do, and this is just the end of a roll, but I actually, well, I'll save my little thread spools, and then I buy Easy Knit Interfacing, which is the, the knit interfacing from Pellon, and I cut it in one inch strips, making sure that the stretch is going, you know, around, around the body. And um, I cut them into strips, and I put them on here, and I use them just like I use the Sokeezy tapes. So when I get to the end of a strip, you know, because they're only so long. Then I just take the next one and lap it over by like a quarter, half an inch and keep going. And they work wonderful and they're like pennies compared to the other stuff. So I'm, I'm not, I'm a cheapskate basically. But if there's a way to do it that's less expensive and just as nice, I try to find it. Oh, uh, let's see. How about recommendations for a first pair of jeans and to understand what weight of denim to get as well? Bought denim online, but way too heavy. Yeah, you know, that's a personal thing, what weight you like your jeans. I like 10 ounce denim. Um, it can be a little heavy though, uh, but it just, I like wearing them. Maybe not sewing them as much as I like wearing them. Um, I like the ginger jeans if you like the stretch jeans, um, but you can't use that on a woven. But I also like the um, Tessa jeans from Seamwork. Um, I'm, the last pair I made were those. I did a video on jeans, on fitting jeans. Uh, why, why, blah, blah. Yeah, see this is what happens, what I edit out. <laughs> I did a video on the jeans a while back, so, um, yeah, that was probably last summer sometime, I'm thinking. But if you go back, you'll see um, my jeans tutorial. Those were Tessa jeans from Seamwork. And, you know, any of them are going to be close to the same. Um, the fly tutorial, I will say on the ginger jeans, the fly tutorial is exceptional. Um, if you don't understand flies... That one just takes your hand and walks you right through it. Plus, she has sew alongs as well. Um, so, if you want like to understand how to, to make jeans, and the first time the ginger ones, I think are really good. The Tessa jeans, the, the instructions are pretty good. Um, not as good as ginger. Um, I've not made the Megan Nielsen ones either, the Ash or the Dawn, but I understand those are really good too. Um, the two jean patterns that I've been stuck on um, and used a couple times are the the Gingers and the Tessa. And then I made a pair of Sabrina Slims into jeans, um, which was just a stretch denim, and just put the did the top stitching on the pockets. But they were pull-on jeans. But they they're really nice. I like them. Um, Carla B, I think I'll try the Sinclair Hyper for free. It looks like a wonderful pattern. It makes easy to try a new company. Yeah, it is really nice when they put those free patterns out there and you can try them out. They have another free one, um, Sinclair, I saw today. It's called the Valley Knit Dress, and it's a like a fit and flare dress that has a waistband and then pleats. It's really cute, um, and it was... I just downloaded that one today. It's on there for free. So if you go to Sinclair, just look for that one, too. Um, Teresa says, I like the look of fold over elastic, but it never looks good when 
I apply it. Have you ever used this? Yes, I do. I use it on my underwear all the time. Um, I had only used it opened all the way up for the waistband. And then since I got my cover stitch, um, I just used them for as a fold over. And I've never done it with a regular machine, but with the cover stitch, you know, you just have to make sure that that stays is seated in there, you know, so that you're not missing, like, skipping stitches or missing a piece of it. So, um, you have to be tedious with it, but I really like the way it, it looks. Uh, let's see, Chris says, I bought the Itch to Stitch Eddie Stone jeans pattern and anxious to try it. First jeans for me, too. I haven't done those yet, but uh, my friend Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles, she told me those are fantastic, and she's sewn a lot of different jean patterns, so I would I trust her judgment for sure. Um, Chris L., I bought the itch. Oh, we just said that one. Libby said, this is such a good idea. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. I hope we can do this a lot. I... I love um, just, you know, being able to learn from you and you guys learn from me as well. Uh, let's see. Notions have been my challenge while quarantine sewing. I've had the worst luck with curbside at Joann's. Yeah, I ordered some serger thread from Joann's. I've ordered 12 rolls and I only got three of them. Um, yeah, I have, I, I'm not going to do that again. Cause it was like, if I'm going to go out, I want it to be worth my while. And I didn't, you know, I, I mean, it said in stock when I ordered them and I only got three and they were just black and white. So I don't see how they could have been, you know, I ordered 12. Actually they were black, white, and gray. Cause that's what I usually use in my serger. I don't mess around with colors in the loopers of things. So I ordered three black, three white, I'm sorry, I ordered four black, four white, and four gray. And I only got three black. That's it. So I don't know. Um, I had some good luck with Wawak. It's online. And they do charge shipping, but it wasn't astronomical. And um, the Maxi Lock, I bought, let's see, 15 rolls of Maxi Lock. After that experience at Joann's, I, I still needed thread. So I bought it from Wawak. And... It was two, uh, if you buy more than four, it was $2.14 for Maxi Lock. So, oh, that was pretty good. Um, and, um, yeah, I got here like in two days. So I'm probably going to do do that for at least until we can go to the store again. Um, let's see. Adrienne says, okay, she's replying to Chris. Thanks. She'll look at those. Janice. Hi, Janice. How long have you had your cover stitch machine? I'd like to purchase one. Which brand would you recommend? Well, I just got it, so I'm not a really good one for recommendations because I'm just, like, had it a week. But I did buy the Brother 2340, um, buy some recommendations of some people on the cover stitch Facebook group, and um, basically I did not want to spend a lot, lot, until I know that it's something I'm going to use a lot. Um, so I'm, it's kind of a lower end one, um, but I'm happy with it so far, but I can't really chalk my experience up to be anybody to really trust with an opinion just yet. <laughs> so, um, but there's a Facebook group out there and they're really wonderful ladies who respond to your questions right away. So, um, I think it's called cover stitch, hmm, cover stitch Facebook group. I don't know. I might have to, um, Go searching for it for you here in a minute. Uh, let's see. Teresa says, are you supposed to stretch slightly or not? With the fold-over elastic, um, I think not. Or just a little bit. Uh, I think that just enough for it to fold. You know what I mean? You don't want to, like, stretch it a lot. But if you pull it just a little bit, that's when it folds. I think that's what you really want to do. I don't think you want to, like, really pull, pull. Um, but just enough so it kind of folds over. Uh, let's see. Carol says, what underwear pattern do you use? I use the Fierce Undies from Patterns for Pirates. Um, really like the fit. Um, it covers up, comes up and covers my bottom in the back. And um, I like that it is a, it's a high-rise, mid-rise 
uh, or thong. I would not you wear a thong, but I think it's four options. High rise, mid rise, bikini, or thong. Well, you know, I'm an old lady, so I don't do the high rise only because my rise is really short. So on me, the mid rise is a nice, you know, a nice if it comes right to my belly button kind of. So that works out really well. Very comfortable. I'm really happy with that pattern. Uh, let's see. Okay. What pattern do you recommend for ladies' underwear? Okay, I think that's that's what I would recommend. The fierce pattern from Patterns for Pirates. Um, Walbeck had great delivery service for serger thread. Yes, they do. I, I was very impressed. Um, Adrian Clamp, in this time of isolation, it's so nice to hang with people. Oh, I agree. That's why I wanted to do this. It's such a lonely hobby normally, and now when you can't even get together with friends, it's this really, we might do this a lot more. I think I like this. Um, for underwear, I have to find the beginning of your thing. Uh, Jan, I can't see the first part of your question. <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway, I'll try to, I'll try to find it here. I, I don't know what, I wasn't sure what you were asking. Okay, Mrs. Mike says, um, Adrian, people who speak our language, definitely. That, you look, say, surgery thread to somebody, and they're going, surgery? <laughs> no. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the fierce pattern from Patterns for Pirates is my favorite. I've heard a lot of people like the scrundies, scrunderwear, or whatever that's called, too. Um, but I didn't care for the Ellie and Mac one, and you know I'm an Ellie and Mac fan, but um, I didn't care for them. They weren't, they didn't have a high enough rise for me. Um, if you don't, first you don't succeed, try, try again. Yeah, that's how it does. Everything with sewing, isn't it? Like, you rarely ever succeed the very first time. At least I don't. <laughs> so, um, yeah, keep trying, and then you'll be a pro on here teaching all of us. Um, Janice, thank you. You're welcome. Carol, uh, thanks. Great to hear. I'm an old lady too and like granny panties. Yep, me too. I, I, uh, resemble that remark for sure. Chris, I'll go and look for the undies pattern. I've been using a pair of jockey, no panty line as my pattern. Yeah, you know what? You can cut up a pair of old underwear and make your own pattern. I always liked, um, when I buy them, I used to like that because I have this really, uncharacteristically short rise which is why I had to like learn how to fit pants like really young because I can't buy pants that fit the waistlines all come up here and um, so the same way with underwear so if I buy high rate high rise they're up you know they're up to my bra line so um, I used to like to buy the Victoria's Secret VS cotton in the I think the mid-rise or the high leg brief or something like that. It wasn't quite um, a high rise, but it was on me. So, um, and that's kind of how these fierce undies were. Um, I actually compared it to some of the Victoria's Secret ones, and the, the cut is basically the same. So I'm really happy with those. Uh, let's see. Got to find my place here. Uh, Whitney from Tomcat Stitchery did a sew along today on underwear for with three options for elastic. Yeah, I saw that she was doing that. Um, that was one I saw today that I wanted to go back and watch. She's a good friend of mine. I, I love Whitney. She's awesome. And then also Ellie and Mac, Diana from Ellie and Mac did a um, all about your cover stitch machine. And guess what? She's looking at this one. So I have to go watch that too. Um, let's see. Paula says, I'm so sorry, guys. Got to bed almost 11 here. And I've got early morning tomorrow. It's nice to chat with you all. We'll check the rest of the chat tomorrow afternoon. God bless and all stay safe. You too, Paula. Have a good night's sleep. And um, hope that your day goes well tomorrow. We'll be doing this again. No worries. Um, Libby says, I would really like a serger. Do you have a recommendation? Um, yeah, earlier we were talking. If you can afford it, go with one of the ones that have the air threading. Because the worst part about a serger is threading. So, um, other than that, um, I have a Janome serger. It's not the air threaded one, but I have Janome. I love it. It is wonderful. I mean, it is like just, I, it just goes through anything. It's never even hiccuped for me. So, and I've had it. 
I bought it. You remember when Hancock Fabrics was closing? That's when I bought my serger. So I've had it quite a while. Um, Adrian says, good night, Paula. Yep, yeah, good night, Paula. Um, Kim, my body is the same. I make the bikini panties and they work as hip huggers. Yeah, it's crazy. I have a super long torso and this short little rise. Um, and a lot of people will, you know, if you're like overweight like I am, a lot of times you're short-waisted. And I, I'm not. And that's why, like, I have these short legs, but petite doesn't work. Because petite usually has, like, it, it works in pants, but not in um, tops. Because they, I have short arms, but the waistline is way up here. And my waist is way down here. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Baby lock surgery, air, th air threading is great. Def definitely. If you can afford you know, the baby lock air threading or the uh, Janome has a new air threaded one and uh, also the Juki has one. I don't know if there's any other brands that have it, but um, those three, I've heard good things about all three of those. And if you can afford those, definitely. Uh, let's see. I bought a Brother 1034D right before all this started and I'm so thankful. No air threading, but it's very easy. I've heard good things about that one, actually. Um, about the brother. Could you please do a lesson for us on making underpants? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. Um, I, um, yeah, we can do some sew along underwear. Sure. Um, I'm just like finished making myself about 12 pairs. So I've learned a lot about, I've used a combination of different elastics and I've learned a lot about which ones I like better. I think it's just kind of a, a personal preference of what elastic you like around your legs all day. Um, and I found some great deals on Etsy for like the underwear elastic that has like the plush underside and also the fold over elastic. Um, actually I'll show you. Here's my bin. I've got this bin full of stuff for underwear. This is like the Pico elastic, and this is all fold over. This is some more fold over that I got on uh, Amazon. And then I've got a whole bunch of nude colored stuff because that's one thing I didn't make myself yet is some nude. And then this is all white and off-white Pico trim. Oh, and then I got this. Um, I've only made one pair with it so far, but I got this one-inch stretch elastic and put it on the top of... Um, I've only done one pair like that so far, but um, that was really comfy. And so then I just take my... Um, Knits that are large enough for a couple pair of underwear. This is the leftover from that game day top the other day. Um, and I, the only thing I bought for underwear was this because I want, I need some nude underwear under white pants and stuff. So I did buy this um, from Girl Charlie. This is cotton spandex, which I think is the most comfortable fabric for underwear so far that I've used. Oh, let's see. Uh, Chris has that machine and she loves it. Cool. That's the 1043D, I think. Uh, let's see. Good. Deanne has it as well. Uh, Jana says, baby lock air threading is super. I also have Viking. I prefer my baby lock. Okay. Leanne says, a lot of people love baby lock. Um, I've never had one, um, but I'm sure if I had one, I'd love it. <laughs> Um, Leanne said, hello everyone, I have baby lock Imagine, and I can't imagine having anything else. It's what, that's awesome. Um, Jen says, Jan says, bring back the Friday sewing school. I will. I was deviating just to do all that whole capsule for Mexico and was kind of counting the bathing suit stuff as part of sewing school. Um, but I got diverted and then all this happened. So yes, I am going to definitely bring it back. Um. Any ideas for uh, something you guys would like to sew along? We could start with the underwear, I guess. That would be a great start. Uh, go ahead and, you know, suggest some things. That would be great. Um, let's see. 
Deborah says, that's what I'm going to buy the Brother 1030 until uh, I see how much I use it. Yeah, that's the exact same thing I did with this cover stitch. Um, just retired and getting back into sewing. Oh, good for you. Congratulations on your retirement, Deborah. That's awesome. Um, Teresa says, could you tell me what width your fold-over elastic is and sources to purchase? All right, so um, it's 5 eighths, I think. Let me... Some of it's a little wider than other, I think. This one is, yeah, this one's 5 eighths. So, um, and I got this from an Etsy shop called Lace and Trims. I'll try and link it for you. Um, but it's, she's in California and really it got here really fast, all the way from California to Ohio. And um, she has a ton of different options. This was like a grab bag, so it was really inexpensive. Um, I figure if I have a lot of different colors and then I have leftover knit, you know, I can find something that matches and just whip up a pair of underwear. Oh, uh, let's see. Thank you, Teresa. I appreciate that. Lisa says, can you do a video focusing on knit neckbands? Sure, I can do it again. We did do that. Uh, we did uh, do a t-shirt neckband in the t-shirt so along back in Friday Sewing School um, when we did the t-shirt thing. So you can check that out in the meantime, but if you'd like to um, do another pattern with that and see it again, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, let's see, Sewing Kathy, I have colors, I have colors fold over, but I need nude. I usually wear nude pants. Thanks for considering an underwear lesson. Sure. No problem. And uh, the, nude, the nude lace I got from that Lace and Trims place, and um, I also ordered, but it isn't here yet, and it's from a little bit slower delivering shop, but I think it's because of the elastic for masks. Um, she said she had 1,600 orders to fill, so I'm not in any big hurry, so I'm like, I'm not pestering this lady. She's trying to get uh, elastic to people who are making masks, and that's way more important than my underwear. But um, she had the one-inch nude um, elastic for the waistbands, so I bought some. I think I bought like 10 yards of white and 10 yards of black. Of, 10 yards of white and 10 yards of nude so that I can, because um, the one inch is really what's called for in that fierce um, panties pattern, but I mean, I, you can use anything really, because I mean, it just won't come up as high. And honestly, it doesn't make much of a difference um, in the rise that much, it's like this much difference. So it isn't, it isn't bad to use the five eights at all. Um, what fabric do you use for underwear? Where did I purchase it? I like, uh, if I'm just buying for underwear, I like the cotton spandex knit. And I usually buy mine on Girl Charlie because it's really inexpensive. Most of their cotton lycra is like six, six to seven dollars, maybe not even. Um, and it's really high quality cotton lycra. So um, that's the most breathable, but still the lycra helps it can, uh, maintain a shape. Um, very nice. I love, I like the cotton lycra. Um, but I made it out of whatever I have left over as well. Um, I, I've got double poly, um, double brush poly, lots of underwear because I love that fabric. So, um, the, the clincher with the double brush poly is that it, it's polyester. So in the summertime, it can be a little hot, so you may want to get the, you know, at least some of them be cotton spandex so that you have some that breathe when the hot weather. All right, let's see. Lisa said, I've gotten knit net, I have, having gotten knit net, blah! Okay, see, this is what I mean, guys. This would be edited out. I have, I haven't gotten knit net, knit, <laughs> <laughs> knit neck pants. Wow. Uh, down yet. Each time. I can't. See, Lisa? Don't feel bad. I can't even say it. Um, <laughs> each time I do one, it's hit and miss, and it's so hard to pick out and redo. Yeah, it is. Um, what I think helps me is, you know how you, you clip the, the four quarters? I actually will sometimes do eights, um, especially if there's if it's a wide neckline, um, like if it's a big scoop neck and you want to make sure that you, you know, have it laying 
right around here. Um, I will I will do the fourths and then I'll do it again on the eighths. And then that way, you know, you're only going a little bit before you're catching up again. Um, one thing to remember when you're doing a scoop neck is that don't use the shoulder seams as two of your quarter points. Because I used to do that and then I couldn't figure out why that would always be really tight right here. Well, because if you actually do quarters, the quarter points are like down here if it's a scoop neck. So you might want to just, you know, that's something to file away. I don't know if that's what you're doing, but that's what I used to do and mess it up. Uh, let's see. Dolores, yes, sewing school underwear, my vote. Okay, we'll do. Uh, Pam, things I love, my baby lock serger and the idea of sewing school for panties. All right, we'll do that. Um, Pam also says in your channel, too, you have a very nice voice for an easy grace. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I do bumble a lot, but it's just me. You know, I just, I'm going to be myself. So that's, that's just how it is. Thank you for the smiles, Deborah. Um, Dolores says, I, I sew Charlie an online shop. I sew Charlie an online shop. Is that a, is that another one? Or are you talking about girl Charlie? If there's another one, you know, my shopping radar is up. Tell me about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Adrian says, I use a lot of pins and go slowly. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. Um, yeah, that's the same thing. You know, use, do it in eighths, pin it, you know, you can stretch it out yourself and make sure it's all pinned too. That's another way to do it. Um, I like the, for neck bands, I like the wonder clips better than pins um, because I'll usually be using my serger and they don't, it's not as, it's not as easy to forget to take off a clamp. Oh, I've never had a pin be stuck in my serger before. It's not fun. <laughs> so definitely make sure the pins are not good. If they get, it gets between the blade and the foot, yeah, it's not, it's not good. So, um, yeah, wonder clips. <laughs> I agree, Deborah. Well, it's about 5 o'clock. If anybody uh, have anything else they want to chat about? Oh, you had to replace your blades from that? Yeah. I haven't replaced my blades yet. I I need to. And um, I'm not really sure how to do it. I was going to take... There's another thing. I was going to take both my, my uh, Janome sewing machine and my Janome serger to the dealer to be tuned and cleaned and everything while I was in Mexico <laughs> and now I don't want to I don't want to let it go because I I need it here because you know it's, this is sewing time right we can't go anywhere we're gonna sew so for clips I use hair clips that flip oh that's cool that's a good idea yeah I know exactly what you mean like the the little clampy kind like mom used to put in our hair <laughs> when we were little that's a good idea. Any other sew along ideas for, for Friday sewing school? All right, well, it's been great hanging out with you ladies. I think um, uh, if anybody has any more questions, go ahead and pop them in here in a few minutes, so I'll probably go ahead and wrap this up. I would love to do this soon. If you guys really like it, um, you know, we can do this pretty often because um, I've enjoyed hanging out with you guys. Oh, really? Did you did they have a video on how to change a serger blade, Deanne? That would be good. Hey, Sam, I hope you got word that you were a winner on the um, drawing. I see Sam Chandler in here. Oh, did your, your hubby did it for you. That's cool. Oh, you're welcome, Deborah. Thank you very much for um, participating. Thank you so much. 
it's really great to hang out with you ladies and talk more than just back and forth on comments. This is this is way nice. Yeah, we'll do this again, and it, especially while we're in this isolation phase. Um, I think it would be it's great to hang out and have people to talk talk to. I mean, I know we're behind. You know, I'm the only one that you can hear, but you can see everybody's comments, and I don't feel so alone. <laughs> All right. Well, it's wonderful to um, chat with you guys, and um, I really, really appreciate you guys participating and bearing with my first time on this. We will be um, we'll be doing this again soon, and um, I'll be let's see. This week I will be showing you a rhapsody from Love Notions. Um, probably going to finally do that indie focus on itch to stitch that I've had a while been planning a while and then kept getting derailed um, but that's probably going to be another video this week and I'm not sure I might have something else too we'll see um, anyway have a wonderful week and I will see you guys on some probably Monday or Tuesday you know I always say Tuesday and then it's like Wednesday before it's actually uploaded so I'm not going to make promises on Tuesday because I get myself in trouble when I do that but you'll see me soon all right have a wonderful Wonderful rest of the weekend. I know there's not much left to it, but you know what? Life is a weekend right now for me. I don't know how it is for you, but guess what? I'm going to get up and I'm going to stay home tomorrow again. <laughs> not that I ever really haven't been going to a job for a while, but um, yeah, it's just different. It's just so different to not go shopping or something. So yeah, but yes, every day is Sunday. I agree. All right. Well, thanks, Dee. I appreciate that. Um, and thanks for bearing with me. Now you guys know why there's things cut out of my videos because I'm um, 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 and saying stupid things. I was going to try and do a blooper reel for my one year anniversary, but uh, I never got it. I was so sick I didn't get around to doing it. So, but hey, I'm better now, so maybe I'll do it anyway. <laughs> anyway, have a great night. Oh yeah, some of you do still work from home. So, um, somebody, one of my friends that works from home, she said, so is it time yet to get out of my day jammies and put on my night jammies? <laughs> anyway, I thought that was pretty cute. Um, but yeah, I, uh, my husband's working from home too, so uh, I try not to bug him. Try not to. <laughs> I think I do though. Well, have a wonderful evening. I'll see you guys later.